From birth to death, they had always been inseparable. Annie and Blair, Blair and Annie, never more than the twins. They even considered themselves one person. It all began on January 19, 1986. In the debilitated hospital room, an ancient clock struck 12 as Blair Woods was born. The lights seemed to flicker and the room was soundless. The new parents predicted ear-piercing shrieks from the newborn Blair, but she was silent and stoic. Mr. and Mrs. Woods only anticipated one child. But ten minutes later, a second child, Blair's twin, Annie, was born. She was also strangely quiet and calm. Since then, their lives have been in sync, putting each foot forward simultaneously while walking. By the time they were four, they hadn't said one word. Their parents didn't think much of it and figured they would grow out of it, but they didn't. One day, Mrs. Woods walked into the twins' room and found them standing while facing each other, locking eyes with the same lifeless expression, murmuring in a strange tongue. They noticed Mrs. Woods standing in the doorway and immediately went silent and faced her, their heads turning in sync, as was everything about them. Over the next couple of years, Annie and Blair were sent to multiple specialists, but they refused to communicate with anyone but each other. They gradually drifted away from their family and denied their company. If anyone would walk into the room they were in, they would simply leave abruptly and lock themselves in another. They stopped eating and almost never slept, always staring the ceiling. They moved from school to school, class to class, state to state, but they were never able to escape the bullying and tormenting they faced. In the teen years, they began to fall in love with writing. Their parents thought that this was a step in the right direction for the girls until they found their diaries. They were filled with malicious thoughts and weird symbols. They showed the books to many psychologists and doctors, trying to decipher what was wrong with their sweet girls. Their actions didn't match any of the regular symptoms for any known mental health disorders, and doctors were baffled. Not long after, the twins found out what their parents had done. They were enraged that their family had invaded their privacy and began to act out. They started stealing, drinking, doing drugs, and even committing arson. They had been caught multiple times and were taken to court where they were proven guilty. Afterwards, they were sent to a high-security mental hospital where they were even more antagonized. They would scrawl strange ciphers on the walls using their forks. The doctors at the hospital had noticed the marks until they covered every inch of their shared room. They would find the twins on the ground, pointing and murmuring in their strange, shared language about their plans. What surprised psychologists even more was one sign they had repeatedly carved into the wall. It resembled a full, healthy heart, and beside it, half a broken heart. Doctors suspected that it was not important, but they were wrong. They were kept in that hospital for 11 long and painful years. No improvement was made. They were getting worse. Every day, all night, they would point to the heart symbol while murmuring to each other. Again, while entering the room unannounced, they saw them whispering and pointed to their sign. And then Blair pointed at Annie, and they both suddenly nodded. Later that night, there was a loud, high-pitched noise, then a bang, and Annie and Blair were limp in their beds. Annie was unresponsive. She had died. A later autopsy of Annie showed no signs of murder, no poison, no stab marks, no signs of strangling or brain trauma. It was as if she suddenly decided to die. 
Usually when a twin dies, the other feels devastated, but it was the opposite for Blair. She had suddenly lifted in spirit. The following weeks was when Blair made the most improvement, communicating and interacting with others. She was becoming normal. Blair was a completely different person, and she released she was released from the hospital to live a normal, healthy life. The only thing she refused to talk about was Annie. It was as if she had never existed. Many years later in an interview, Blair was asked about Fitzgerald's tragic death. After lots of prodding, Blair finally revealed the truth. Well, from the time of birth, we'd always need something strange to be alive. We not realize till brains had matured and we reached peak. We knew that one had to die in order for the other to free life. So that's what Annie did.